God bless you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are here on another Wednesday night edition. Hallelujah. Of Rebirth Live. We thank God for you guys being with us on tonight. We count it all joy. We count it a blessing, a privilege, and an honor just to be coming before you guys on tonight. Once again, if you are just joining us, hallelujah, I'm Pastor Justin S. Lucas, and I'm here on tonight to bring you the word of God bring you what thus say of the Lord in teaching, in preaching, in whichever way I can be a blessing unto you guys, I want to be a blessing unto you guys on tonight. We're so glad and we're so blessed, amen, that it is another week that God has kept us. Man, I had that song on my heart this morning. It's another day that the Lord, he has kept me. My God, it's another day that the Lord, he has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on Jesus. It's just another day that the Lord, he has kept me. Listen, I'm glad that you're with us on tonight, that you have made it a part of your weekly schedule to be with us here on Rebirth Live. It's just a blessing, amen, that you chose to just join in and hear a word and to just be encouraged on tonight. And we thank you. Listen, I know that the numbers are, are grim sometimes. I know that the numbers aren't it's seemingly what we think, but we want to push this thing out and get the numbers up that we can reach as many people as we can and just be a blessing in this time and in this season. Look, my kids were watching. They said, Daddy, it's only 12 people watching. It's only 20 people watching. I said, look, we ain't playing Fortnite or playing Warzone. Hallelujah. They be having thousands of viewers. But amen, one day, and I'm believing God, one day soon, hallelujah, we'll be able to get there. But for the people that are in this room, Look, it may not be thousands, it may not be hundreds, hallelujah, but we are going to reach as many people as we can. I believe by faith that you are here at the right place, at the right time for this right now word. So we're going to give it to you on tonight and give you everything that God says to give unto you. Now listen, you might not just be the only one, but we want you to share it. We want you to like it. We want you to put it out there so that not only you will be blessed, but that somebody, your neighbor, your family, your friend might be blessed by this word on tonight. God has been favoring us and he's been directing us to teach on the DIS series. And here we are again. I hope you're not getting bored. I hope you're not getting bored, but each week has been something different that God has been revealing. Amen. And can I share with you that on tonight, this portion of the DIS series is going to be another blessing. Ooh, we another blessing. Amen. So look, while we get ready to sing and go to God in song, give you guys time to get in here and give you guys time to get warmed up and acclimated to service on tonight. We're going to sing hallelujah that God has indeed got a blessing with our name on it that it's another blessing that God has given us. Amen. And we're going to worship God on tonight. So like and share. Get somebody in here that you know needs to hear this word on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together right there in your house. Thank you, Lord. The song simply says tonight, It makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. So hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test, but it won't last always. So get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. Get ready, yeah, for your blessing. Get ready, yeah. For your miracle, make sure left you on here tonight. I know you've been hurting deep down on the inside, but let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on and get ready, yeah, for your blessing. I believe it, get ready. For your miracle, oh, get ready, yeah. For your blessing, uh, get ready, hallelujah. For your miracle, oh, I believe tonight that God has indeed got a blessing with your name on it. You already know the song. Come on, help me say, God's got a blessing. Yes, he does. Come on and help me say, say, God's got a blessing. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's got a blessing. I believe that tonight. Come on and say, God's got a blessing. It's got my name on it. Come on, let's speed it up tonight. Say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yeah. Ooh, God's got a blessing. Hey, with my name on it. God's got a blessing. I say, hey, God's got a blessing. Ooh, God's got a blessing. Hey, with my name on it. Uh, hey, with my name on it. Yeah. With my name on it. It's God's got his name on it. With my name on it. Oh, with my name on it. Whoa, with my name on it. Oh. I don't know about you tonight. But I believe by faith that God has indeed a blessing with my name on it. Come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Hey, ooh, God's got a blessing with my name on it. I want you to just be encouraged on tonight. I want you to be blessed on tonight. And I want you to know that no matter what the devil is trying to do in your life, God said you cannot curse what I have already blessed. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight, but God's got something with your name on it. God's got something in spite of all that you're going through, in spite of everything that you're having to deal with. I want you to know that there's a blessing on the way. Look, look, I know you got blessed and then they took it back, Keita. But look, God said it was only a test. Hey, it was only a preview of what I'm about to do in your life. I dare somebody on this broadcast tonight to say I got a blessing and it's got my name on it. Come on, look, by faith, I want you to type your name in the comments. I know your name is there, but just say God's got a blessing with my name on it. He's got a blessing with my name on it. Oh, with my name on it. With my name on it. Hey, with my name on it. Yeah, with my name on it. This blessing is mine. Hey. I said it's mine, hey, it's mine, yes it is, it's mine, it's all mine, hey, it's mine, it's mine, I said it's mine, oh, with my name on it, with my name on it, with my name on it, I said with my name on it, oh, got my name on it. I dare you to believe it on tonight that God's got a blessing with your name on it. Come on, somebody just type tonight. Say, it's mine. Come on. I dare you to type tonight, it's mine. It's my blessing. Hallelujah, the song said, and I'm going to get it right now. Hey, I'm speaking to somebody tonight that you need to, you need to declare it. You need to say it's got my name on it. It belongs to me. My father is rich in houses and land, and he paid for it all for me. Hey, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight on here, but I want you to just, just holler back at me and let me know you're in the room. Say, it's got my name on it. Listen, we come to be a blessing to you guys on tonight. Once again, we thank you for joining. If you're just now joining us, I'm Pastor Lucas here at Rebirth. Just to take a little bit of time, we are directly behind Taco Bell and and Chick-fil-A. We want you to know where we are because as time and things go on, listen, we don't know exactly when we're going to be able to return to the sanctuary, but we want you to know where we are in the city of Martinsville. Hallelujah. 400 Franklin Street right here in Martinsville, Virginia, uh, right there behind Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A. We want you to know where we are. You can join us here every week at any one of our digital services uh, on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. And at Wednesday nights, we Birth Live at 6 o'clock p.m. We like to get the word out there that we're trying to reach and teach and, and do all that we can. Look, I know parents, we're living in a time where you the Uber driver, you the pharmaceutical pickup. You, that came out wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. You you taking people to doctor's appointments, teaching the children, you professing now. Amen. You're doing all that you can in this time. But we like to be here at Rebirth at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays to just kind of pick you back up, give you another reason to run on for the weekend, amen, and that you can be with God and God can be with you. We want to do all that we can, amen, here at Rebirth. But we want to thank you for joining us on tonight. As I always say, not only thank you for joining us, I heard a preacher preach this weekend. 
not only just beg you for your tithe and offer it, but we're going to put it out there. We're going to ask, amen, that you continually do your part in your giving. As I always say, we are living in a trying time. We're living in a testing season, saints, that God is testing the people of God. Amen. He's testing his people. Are you tithing? Are you supporting the church in Bible study? Are you on the broadcast? Are you giving an offering? Amen. Listen, I don't know about you, but I can't lose what God is doing in my life. And I would never want to lose the support that he's blessing me with. So I try to do all that I can in this time and in this season to be a blessing to the people of God, be a blessing to the community and others that I don't know. Amen. But I will not forget my church. I will not forget to tithe and give my offering. Amen. And be included in what God is doing here in this body. We thank God for you guys doing all that you can. Hallelujah. If you are here with me on tonight, uh, I want you to pray with me now. I want you to pray with me now that this word on tonight will be exactly what it is that you need. Before another word come out of my mouth, we're going to pray and we're going to go to God that everything that be said be what you need on tonight. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you. We give you praise. Amen. We give you glory. We just bless your holy name, God, because it deserves to be blessed. We say thank you, Lord, on tonight because you deserve the thanks. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you speak continually to my heart, that you speak continually to my mind. Speak, Lord, even right now, Lord, while the people of God may hear. Let this word on tonight, the DIS series, God, let it be a blessing unto them. Let it move and shake them. God, let it lift them up where they belong. We give you praise and we thank you in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. I pray that you've been blessed, amen, by all that we've been doing here in ministry, by all that we've been doing uh, in the past couple of weeks. Listen. Do you not realize the end of the year is upcoming? It is coming up on us vastly and fast. Amen. And it's going to be uh, Christmas time before you know it. It's going to be, I believe, March again before you know it. We don't know when we'll return to the sanctuary. Amen. Preferably soon. But we want to be wise and do all that we can. We are rejoicing in the midst of all of the loss that we've experienced in this town and this week. So many people are passing from the situation that's in our nation and in our town. Amen. And we're still continually praying uh, for all of those affected by this. It's been something serious. We're praying for the loss of uh, Pastor Price in Greater New Bethel. He has been a, a, a standing pillar, such a gentle giant of a man, a man of wisdom and wise words, hallelujah, and just comfort. Uh, anytime you were around him, you were comforted. You were uh, uh, felt uh, blessed to be there. I can remember being in his office many times with my father, amen, and uh, uh, Bishop Dillard there in Charlotte with the Cross Church when we fellowship with them, amen, and I can remember just being next to him in the office, being near him, and just feeling that feeling of wisdom and honor, amen, but we thank God and we're praying for, this, for that family, amen, also thanking God for Sister Lisa, I know she's watching, hallelujah, Sister Lisa was affected uh, by sickness, amen, and she has recovered, she has come through, we give God praise. Hallelujah. Tonight, come on. We salute you, Sister Lisa. We give God praise for you. Making it through. Pressing your way through. Giving God glory. Giving God glory on tonight. Listen, I want to get right into Bible study on tonight. Hallelujah. And continuing in our D-I-S words. D-I-S words. Listen, if you have not uh, joined us in the previous broadcast, you can go right on YouTube and check out the link there, Rev Lucas on YouTube, and you can find all of the DIS series words, everything. You can go back and just watch them on your lunch break. They're not long. You can watch them when you're washing the clothes. Just plug it up. Listen. Amen. But tonight we're getting into some new words for you guys, continuing into the DIS series. I pray that you've been blessed. I'm going to start this one off differently, and I know these words are not DIS words, but I promise you, if you stay with me in the car long enough, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Let me start you off with the word baffle. Amen. Has anyone ever been bamboozled before? Hoodwinked. Hallelujah. Amen. We didn't land no Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. Now I ain't going to land it on us. Beat and befogged. Amen. Befuddled. Uh, uh, bewildered. Uh, confounded and confused. Uh huh. Disoriented. This, you said, preacher, this ain't DIS. Where, where you going? Fuddled. Hallelujah. Uh, graveled. Mazed and muddled. Uh, preacher, this ain't DIS. Hallelujah. 
mystified and perplexed, uh -huh, puzzled and vexed. Can I give you those words on tonight? Did you not know that these words that I just gave you, I dare not go back through them, I might pronounce them wrong, but that these words are synonyms for my next DIS word on the list. Hallelujah. These words are indeed synonyms for my next D-I-S word on the list. Can I give you tonight the next word? I want you to just shout discombobulated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Discombobulated. Listen, I want to make sure I got it spelled right. I got to make sure on the screen that it is spelled correctly. Discombobulated. Now, let me share with you first that this was a word that I heard my dad say, Bishop Lucas, bless your heart. I heard him say when we were kids and I ain't know what it meant, but I know what it meant when he said it. Hallelujah. Got me all discombobulated Discombob uh, discombobulated see that's what's wrong with you you discombobulate i said okay i'm gonna just try to figure out what that word means but it literally means to be vexed it literally means to be puzzled and to be bamboozled and muddled and to be hallelujah bewildered and to be confused and disoriented Oh, my God. Listen, if you can uh, give and sum up 2020 in one word, I would believe that 2020 has been the year of discombobulation. Uh, uh, I said 2020 has been a discombobulated year because it has been a year that has brought on confusion worldwide. It has been a year that has brought on, hallelujah, perplexities and things that even the smartest don't understand. It has been a year that is seemingly month after month, week after week, we wonder what the next month is going to bring. Even in the passing of the Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman, amen, uh, Kobe Bryant, all of these things, we've been bewildered this year sickness in the land all of these things that have taken place it seems as if guess what we've been discombobulated by 2020 uh-huh but the literal and actual definition of discombobulate is to throw into a state of confusion let me say that again the literal definition of discombobulate is to throw into a state of confusion now i don't know about you but every time i've ever thrown anything in my life let me look for something to throw at you right now uh i, I got this bottle cap right oh just drop the bottle cap yeah. Hallelujah. Let me let me find something else. I got this bottle right here. Amen. And every time I've had to throw anything, guess what? The first thing I had to do was get a hold of it. Now I'm speaking to somebody tonight. You saying, I don't know why the devil has got a hold of me. I don't know why the devil seemed like he got a hold of my kids. It's because he's trying to discombobulate you in your life. I know that sounds big and educated, but let me share with you. He's trying to throw you into a state of confusion. He's trying to throw your job into a state of confusion. He's trying to throw your children into a state of confusion where they don't know who they are or what they are. He's trying to throw you into a state of confusion. Let me share with you with this on tonight. Let me share this with you on tonight that I may be confused about a lot of things. Oh my God. But one thing I do know ah, is that I read in the book of Numbers that said God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should have to repent. I'm not confused. I may be confused on a lot of things. I may get on first lady's nerves about a lot of things. They say, well, you think about this and, and how you feel about that and what you, what you think we ought to do with this. But I am not confused when it comes down to my Lord and Savior. Oh, I know who he is. There was a time in my life, hey, that I was confused and I didn't know if he was real to me. I, I didn't know if he was true to me, but I can stand here tonight and say I am no longer confused because guess what? I was only confused because I was leaning on mama's prayers. I was only confused because I was leaning on daddy's prayer. I was leaning on grandmama's say so and grandmama's direction. I was leaning on, on bishop's teaching. Oh, but when I learned how to find him for myself, I want you to know tonight if you don't know, know who God is, hey, I want you to know that he'll remove the discombobulation in your life and you can know him for yourself. Don't be 
confused. But I want you to say, Lord, I want to know you for myself. I, I just don't want to know you from testimony of sister so-and-so. I just don't want to know you, God. Hallelujah, from when the deacons opened up service. Oh, but I want to know you for myself. I want to have a relationship with you for myself. I want to know you. I don't want to be confused anymore. I'm speaking to the confused mind. I'm speaking to the, the tattered mind. I'm speaking to the broken mind. You shall no longer be confused, but you got to know that God is real. You, oh yes, I know that he's real because I can feel him down on the inside. Y'all talk to me. Yes, God is real. I will not be confused anymore. That's the first word, discombobulate, discombobulate. Let me give you another one here, hallelujah, and, and I pray that I preach this thing right. I pray that I preach this thing right because when I was getting, when, when God was inputting it into me today, hallelujah, I was finishing things up and the children were sitting there and, and as I begin to talk to, and the Lord began to talk to me and tell me what to type and what to get ready, how to prepare for tonight, I was sitting there and every time I'd start typing, I'd get a quickening of the spirit and, and Josiah didn't say nothing the first time but the second time it got good and I yelled out I said oh my God and he he said daddy what's wrong and I had to explain to him I said son the Lord is just speaking to me and when God tell me something so good I just can't sit still I, when God tell me so I know y'all laughing at me I know you be picking on me but when God tell me something and he reveals something to me there's something that gets a hold of me hallelujah that I just can't, I can't control. I, let me give you what God has given me. He said, secondly, the word tonight is discredit. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said the word tonight is discredit. Come on. Come on. It's discredit. It's discredit. Let me give you a disclaimer. Oh, that's another one. Ooh, disclaimer. I got to type that in there. I got to type it. I don't know if I got it tonight. Hallelujah. Let me give you a disclaimer tonight. Uh-huh. That Jesus healed the sick. All right, Jesus raised the dead, uh huh? With two fish and five loaves, five thousand hungry souls, Jesus fed, uh huh? He gave sight to the blind and he set the captive free. Y'all come on in here. He made the lame man walk, okay? And he made the dumb man talk. I need somebody to tune up with me. I said he made the lame man walk. He made the dumb man talk. Jesus did all of this, and I know I'm missing a lot of stuff that Jesus did. He, he healed the sick. He raised the dead, fed the five, uh, fed the hungry, gave sight to the blind, uh, set the captive free, made the lame man walk, made the dumb man talk. And guess what? They killed him. Oh, my God. Listen. And they killed him. Listen. They lied on Jesus. So I got to ask you something tonight. What do you think they're going to do to you? <laughs> I said they lied on Jesus. What in the world you think they going to do to you? They crucified Jesus. What you think they going to do to you on your job? Come on, saints. They did all that they could do to Jesus. What you think they going to do to you? Let me share you with you on tonight what the meaning of discredit is. Uh -huh. It is to injure the credit or reputation of or to defame. Uh huh. You say I got a good name on my job. Yeah, I got a good name. They when they call my name, they say, "Oh, he's a good person." Uh huh. Oh, when they call my name, they say, "Oh, yeah, he's such a nice guy." Amen. I want you to know that the devil don't like that. I see you. That the devil don't like that. He wants to do all that he can to discredit your good name. Uh, now, if your name ain't nothing, don't be saying amen. But uh, hallelujah, the devil wants to do all that he can to sully and discredit your reputation. I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, I almost say, well, you know, I really don't care what folks say. But I want when people call my name. Yeah, you know that guy with that rebirth? Yeah, you, you know Scotty, Pastor Scotty. Yeah, yeah, one of the Lucas boys. I want when people call my name, they should say, that's a good guy. Hallelujah. You know, he be preaching. And he be trying to do all that he can do. Amen. I want when somebody find out, hallelujah, that my kids is my kids and me and my wife's kid. You know, they such a nice couple. Hallelujah. I want a good name. Listen, but more than with man. Ah, I said, but more than with man. I don't know about you tonight. You might not care, but I want a good name with God. 
away. I said, oh, I want a good name with God. Because if you get a good name with man, hallelujah, that still ain't going to get you a car. Huh? They can say he's such a nice guy, but he ain't approved for this car. Come on. He's such a nice guy, but I can't give him this house. You're such a nice guy, but I can't give you this job. Oh, but when I have a good name with God, hey, I said, when I have a good reputation with God, when I have a good report and a good accreditation with God, God said, I'll make everything that's, good, that's supposed to be denied, hallelujah, be open to you. I'll make every door that's supposed to be shut be open to you. Let me tell you tonight, it's okay to have a good name with man. It's okay to have a good name uptown. Oh, but at the end of the day, the only name that matters is the name above every name. The only name that matters and the credit that matters is to have good credit with God. Okay, let me go somewhere with this. Let me go somewhere with this. It says to show, to be undeserving or trust or believe. They want to destroy confidence in you. The enemy desires to destroy people's confidence in you. Check this out. Let me share with you this. Uh, uh, you, you ever went to, hallelujah, do I have that in here? I think I got that in there. You ever went, hallelujah, to the to the uh, a courtroom? You've seen it in the movie. One of the first things that they try to do uh, when someone is the witness to the crime or to whatever that other person is being put on trial for, right? The first thing that the prosecutor tries to do is to discredit the witness. Y'all come on in here. I'm going somewhere with this on tonight. I said the first thing that the prosecution has to do is dig up dirt on the person that is getting ready to testify. Uh -huh. All they got to do is dig up something negative on the key character witness that approved that that person did what they did. All they've got to do is dig up a negative thing for the person that's getting ready to give their testimony. Check me out. Hallelujah. To make sure that the person in the error or in the wrong gets convicted. Y'all talk to me in here. I want to let you know that the devil does the same thing. All he's trying to do is discredit you. I said all the devil wants to do is discredit you. If he can discredit you, hallelujah, then your testimony won't mean a thing. The devil is not concerned, hear me tonight, hallelujah, with what you are doing. The devil is not concerned, hallelujah, with what it is you got going on. But the only thing the devil is concerned with is the testimony that you are, are about to give when God bring you out of what it is you are in. I said the devil is concerned. He is worried sick with the testimony that you're going to give. Why is he worried tonight preacher? Because Revelations 12 and 11 says and they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The devil said, if I can just kill her now, she'll never be able to tell that God did it for her. If I can just make him lose his mind now, he'll never be able to say it was God who was my keeper. It was God who was my sustainer. It was God that made a way out of no way. That's why the devil is after you. That's why the devil's trying to destroy you. That's why the devil's trying to kill you so that you will not give your testimony it's the same way in the movie. They say if that person give that testimony, then he'll be convicted of the crime. We got to stop him from taking the stand. I want to let you know tonight uh, that the devil want to stop you from standing. <laughs> the devil want to stop you from giving up what it is that God has done. Because there's victory when you testify. There's overcoming when you testify. There is joy and there is peace and there is joy and there is peace when it is that you testify. Y'all talk to me in here on tonight. I said the devil wants to discredit you. I said he wants to discredit you. He wants to discredit you. I got this next one. It's two into one. It's two into one. And God gave me this on today. And let me tell you what. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. Josiah said, Daddy, what's going on? I said, son, the Lord is speaking to me. That's why I be telling y'all to be quiet. I said, the Lord is speaking. He said, what are you saying right now? I started telling him, and then his eyes lit up. He said, oh, my goodness. I said, here we go. I, I, I want you to know tonight that, that the devil wants you to be disappointed. He's trying to disappoint you. Uh -huh. 
that you might be displeasing. Y'all got me? He's trying to disappoint you that you might be displeasing. Here we go. I promise I'm going somewhere with this. Listen to this tonight. I heard, I think it was... Um, I think it was Bishop Younger. I think it was Bishop Younger talking. I can't remember who he said he was talking to. Amen. But he said, you can never surprise God. Hallelujah. You can never surprise God because we know that the word says that he knows our ending before our beginning. Amen. He has written our plan of our life. He knows every hair on our head. So you technically by nothing that you do can surprise God. He said this, this uh, kind of uh, bewildered him. This kind of made him scratch his head at first. But he said you may not be able to surprise God because he knows all. He said but sometimes I think you can disappoint him. Amen. Man, someone told him that you may not surprise God, but you can uh, be displeasing or disappoint him by the decisions and the ways and things you choose. God knows what we are, have before us. He places these things before us that we may choose. So we may come off disappointing sometime to God that we did not choose the right way, but he already knows. I want you to read tonight in Romans 12 and 1 where it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living what? Sacrifice. Holy, join us on Sunday, holy and acceptable and pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service. I don't know about you on tonight, but I want to be pleasing unto God. Uh, at the end of the day, not just at the end of my life, but I want my actions throughout the day, when I close my eyes at night, I want God to say, man, I'm proud of you. You made it through another day. You didn't get caught up in temptation. You didn't, amen, go to the left or to the right. Amen. I'm I want God to be proud. I want him to be pleased with me. Verse number two says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, he would not tell us to not be conformed to this world. Amen. If he just now hadn't talked to us about being pleasing. When it is we are conformed to this world, it's unpleasing to God. I'm going to say it again. When it is that we do the things of the world, it is not pleasing to God. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what what is that is good and acceptable and pleasing and perfect and the will of God. See, when you do things that are pleasing, when you're not conformed to the world, you are doing things that are in the will of God. Let's go to verse number three. For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man is among you, same grace I got is the same grace you got. You may have a different struggle. You may have a different issue. Hallelujah. But grace is given to both of us. Listen to this. It said to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he is or than he ought to think. Me and First Lady was talking about this this week and I said that's the problem. People and the Bible told us don't think more of yourself than you are. Don't think more of yourself than you are but to think soberly not drunken, not to, not to think crazily and wildly but to think soberly according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. You, you listen, you ought to have a sound mind. You ought to have a stable mind. Hallelujah. You ought to have a mind that is pleasing unto God. You ought to have thoughts that are pleasing unto God. I don't know about you, but I want to live a life that is pleasing unto God. I know we'll do things that may disappoint God. We may You can't never shock him or surprise him. Hallelujah. But I know every day won't be right and won't be perfect. Whatever you like, peaches and cream, cookies and cream. Amen. But guess what? I want to be pleasing unto God. Listen to this. I was in a meeting yesterday. I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to displease the Lord. I was in a meeting yesterday. And when I was in this meeting, amen, I was there, uh, uh, hallelujah, amen, and I was in this meeting handling some business. And guess what? The people that I was in the meeting with, they knew that right after that meeting, I had, a pre I had an appointment. Amen. I had a scheduled appointment at this same facility. And as I was there, hallelujah, uh, Josiah said thumbs up. As I was there, I was in a meeting. They knew I had an appointment that had already been scheduled. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, the appointment was scheduled weeks ago, so I knew I would already be at that office. They said, hey, if you're already going to be there for the 430 appointment, come here at 3. We can meet with you before you go to your appointment. I said, hey, that's perfect. I've already got to come down there. Two birds with one stone. 
on. I sat there, and as I was in the appointment, the woman that I was, one of the uh, uh, people that I was meeting with, she said, um, listen, your appointment is at 4 o'clock, so I know we need to hurry things up. The meeting went on, hallelujah, for about an hour. She said, listen, I don't want you to miss your appointment. She said, she began to hurry. She said, I don't want you to miss your appointment. I know you've got to get down there. It's about 3.50 now. I don't want you to miss your appointment. I said, it's all right. My appointment is only, isn't until 4.30. She said, oh, okay. So she relaxed. And she said, okay, what about this? What about that? I said, okay, we went on with the meeting. She spoke up in the meeting and said, I don't want you to miss your appointment. Let me tell this with you tonight. I said, the devil desires to get you disappointed. I need somebody to share this right now. The devil desires to get you disappointed with God so that he can... I, I said he desires to get you disappointed with God, amen, so that you will miss your appointment. Ah, my God. He desires to get you disappointed with God so that you will miss your appointment. He wants you to miss your appointed time. He wants you to, y'all better talk to me in here tonight. I said the devil wants you to miss your appointed time. He wants to get you disappointed with God so that you will get disgruntled, so that you will get, amen, uh, disrespectful, so that you will just lose and get distance from God so that you will miss your appointment. Hallelujah. Don't get disappointed with God and wind up missing your appointment. Y'all better talk to me. Don't wind up getting disappointed with God and miss your appointed time. Don't let the devil disappoint you. Hallelujah. That you might miss your appointment. Now, let me share. You said, preacher, how you know that's true? How you know that's real? Let me share with you what happened to Joseph in the Bible. Let me share with you what happened to Brother Joseph. Everything that happened to Joseph, we always say was a setup for where God was carrying him. Yes, that's true. But it was also a setup, hallelujah, to make him disappointed so that he would miss his appointment. Joseph went from premeditated murder in his family house. Hallelujah. His brothers plotted to kill him, to take his coat of many colors. They put him in a well hallelujah and they left him there to die hallelujah he was then raised out of the well and sold into slavery he was lied on and pulled on in part of his house then he was thrown into jail and from the jail he went to uh, 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 interpret the dreams and wind up sitting on the throne what am I saying everything that Joseph had to go through hallelujah the devil desired to disappoint him uh, the devil desired to make him get disappointed, hallelujah, so that he would miss his appointment. Y'all better talk back to me. Oh, but Joseph stayed close to the voice of God. He stayed close to the leading and direction of God. He listened to the voice of God, and guess what happened? He did not miss his appointment. Can I share with you tonight that you cannot afford to miss your next appointment? You cannot afford to miss your next appointment. You cannot afford to miss your next appointment. Bless God, I got out of the meeting, right? And when I got out of the meeting, I, I went downstairs and I went to my appointment. Uh huh. And when I got to my appointment, guess what happened? I almost got disapproved for the appointment. I made it. I wasn't going to tell it tonight, but I'm going to tell it anyhow. I made it to the appointment from my meeting. Amen. I, 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 I made it there on time. I was there early, 15 minutes early. Hallelujah. I walked in and, and, and thank God uh, uh, by the grace of God from them knowing my wife, they treated me like a, like a king. Hallelujah. And, but I, I got downstairs and guess what? I almost got disapproved. I went down there and I went downstairs and guess what? When I went downstairs, I said, okay, I'm here at the appointment. Had to get a tooth taken out. I'll just tell you what it was. Had to get my last wisdom tooth taken out. And I went down there and they were getting ready to get it started. Hallelujah. They said, all right, Mr. Lucas, you all checked in. Uh, okay, we got to check your blood pressure. I'm like, hey, I'm good. I, I don't, thank God I don't have high blood pressure. Amen. I said, I'm good, but I know I had to put on a few quarantine pounds. If you can, I get an amen tonight. Hey, Hallelujah. I know I've been eating them cheesecake squares. Ooh, I've been eating them. Hallelujah. And, and I know I've been eating First Lady's tacos, homemade, authentic tacos. Okay, I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. There it is. And, and I know I put on a few pounds. He said, we got to get your blood pressure. I said, oh, my God, I forgot. 
I forgot they had to get my blood pressure. So they put the little cuff on me, and, uh, and they started taking my blood pressure. And guess what, saints? It was high. Ooh. I said, guess what, saints? It was high. That blood pressure was high. And I said, okay, wait a minute. They said, what's your blood pressure doing? So I, I said, I just got out of a meeting having to run up and down them steps, uh, them steep steps. Then I come across the parking lot in the heat. Yeah, I, they said, well, just calm down. We'll check it again. They said, calm down. We got to check it again. I said, now, you mean to tell me I've been waiting to get this tooth pulled. And I I done got here and almost got disapproved. Uh -huh. I, I done almost got disapproved. I done sat here and she said, check it again. Went up again. Checked it again. Went up again. They said, get somebody else in here and check it manually. She come in there. I'm thinking she going to give me a break. Let the numbers be lower. She said, no, it's still high. They said, Mr. Lucas, you got to calm down. We know you don't like coming to the dentist, but you got to calm down. I sat there. They said, think on happy thoughts. Think on happy thoughts. So I started thinking about my kids playing. I, I started seeing how good they're doing in school. And, and then next thing you know, my eyes start twitching. I, I started pronouncing words that I had to teach them that they ought to know. And then I started getting frustrated. And I started thinking about me almost flipping the desk over. And I said, no, that ain't the way to think. That ain't the way to think. They checked it again. Guess what? Still high. They said, Mr. Lucas, you got to think of something that just will calm you down. I said, I know where to go. I said, oh, first lady, look how beautiful she is. Oh, wifey, hallelujah. I'm so blessed to have my wife. I, I'm sitting there trying to calm down. Oh, but then I got to think about how good she look. Hey, hey. Then I got to think about how pretty she is. And I can't say the other stuff I got to think about. I can't say it online. I can't say it. Amen. And then my heart rate shot up. Nah, start palpitating. Start beating out my chest. I said, I got to calm down. They, they checked it again. It was still high. I said, oh, they said, Mr. Lucas, you got to calm down in order for us to get that too. I said, I didn't come this far. I can't get, oh, I can't get disapproved. I didn't got it. I didn't made it to the chair and it's time to get this thing out. Been in there by itself for years. I said, I can't get disapproved. They said, Mr. Lucas, you got to think on something peaceful. Oh, I just, somebody get ready to shout in your house. You got to think on something peaceful, Mr. Lucas. You got to think on something happy. You got to think on something that gives you peace. Oh, and I laid back in the chair. They said, just lay back. I laid back in that chair. And I said, I done tried to think on my kids. I'm about to shout up in here. I done tried to think on my wife. I done tried to think on my household. And I tried to think on these things. Oh, but I said, Jesus. They said, you got to think on something peaceful. I said, Jesus. I sat there. I said, Jesus. I start saying, Jesus, Jesus, fix it, Lord. Jesus, regulate it. Jesus, work it out. I didn't come too far, Jesus. I, and the more I call Jesus, I said, the more I call him, oh, the better I feel. I, I said, the more I call him, oh, that blood pressure got to come down. The more I call him, Lord, I come too far. I don't want to be disapproved now. I said, Jesus, Jesus. She cut it on it started inflating. I said, Jesus. I didn't want to agitate the machine. I started whispering, Jesus. I, I started whispering. When it cut off, it went all the way down below uh, 87 on the bottom number. They said that's good. They said that's good. But they said, Mr. Lucas, we can go ahead and start your procedure now. You didn't got it all the way down. I said, God, I thank you. I tried to think on my kids. I got frustrated. Tried to think on my wife. I got excited. Amen. But when I started thinking on the name of Jesus, God said I regulated it and I approved. You want to know why I didn't get disapproved? Because God already pre-approved me for my blessing. I said, God already pre-approved me for my blessing. You, some of y'all know you didn't went to that car lot and you knew you weren't going to get approved. Some of y'all know you went to try to get a house and your credit score was the same as your age. Y'all ain't talking to me. You knew you weren't going to get approved, but I got news to you that God has already pre-approved for you. Hallelujah, because the word said eyes haven't seen. Hey, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts and minds of what God has prepared for them that love the Lord. Hey, and are called according to his purpose. I need somebody to say tonight that I have already been pre-approved. I said I've already been pre-approved. If you read in the first chapter of Genesis, in the book of the Bible, the beginning of the Bible, the Bible speaks of God creating the earth. He speaks he speaks of the vegetation. He speaks of night and day. He speaks of the animals and, and the great monsters of the sea and the monsters of the land. And guess what? The Bible said, according to their kind, when he did all of this, he said, God saw that it was good and it was pleasing. Listen, and he affirmed it and he sustained it. 
I need somebody to read that for the rest of this week. Genesis, the first chapter. God saw that it was good, that it was right. He it was pleasing unto him. He affirmed it and he sustained it. Hallelujah. I want to let you know on tonight that when you are just pleasing unto God, God said, guess what I'll do? I'll affirm you. I'll let the world know that you're mine. I'll let the boss know that you're uh, gifted. I'll let the doctor know that you are already healed. I will affirm you and I will sustain you. I will hold you down. When I hear that word sustain, I always see brother Chris playing the keyboard or the organ and he's holding a continual note. That means that it will always last. That means that it will always be there. God saw that it was pleasing. All I dare you to do tonight, saints, is say Lord, I just want to be pleasing. I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to be disapproved by you. Hallelujah. I don't want to be displeasing because when I'm pleasing in your sight God you will approve me you will affirm me and you will hold me down listen I'm done tonight I didn't gave you all of my DIS words I didn't gave you my testimony hallelujah the tooth is out I got it pulled out yesterday a wisdom tooth pulled yesterday and guess what tonight I'm preaching the word of God to you I thought I was going to have to do a rerun but God is good hallelujah I'm preaching the gospel preaching the word of God to you on tonight listen I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you have found or heard something in this teaching on tonight that has been a blessing to you. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, I pray that you have found something in this teaching on tonight that has indeed been a blessing to you. I don't know what it was. It may have been one word. It may have been two words. It may have been all of them. But I pray that one of them, something has been said or done that has been a blessing to you. I want you to pray with me right now because we're going to bring this thing to a close. We're going to bring this thing to a close in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, whatever your people are dealing with, whatever they're going through, Lord, Lord, whether it be displeasure, dissatisfaction, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you continually touch them. Lord, let them know that they were not discredited, but that the testimony that they're going to give is going to help pull somebody else out of what they're in. It's going to help bring somebody else out of what they're going through. I pray in the name of Jesus that every spirit of discombobulation, <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus that it be removed, that it have to flee, that it have to go, never to return again. We speak peace of mind and no confusion. We speak joy of the Lord and no sadness. We give God praise and we thank you again for leading us through this series of DIS. Lord, until the next time, we pray that you bless your people, touch them, God, individually as well as collectively. We give you praise right now for them. In Jesus' mighty name, we say thank you. Listen, I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that you join us here on Sunday morning. Hallelujah for another impactful word. Like and share and send it to somebody that needs to hear the word of the Lord. We love you. God bless you in the name of Jesus.